Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about uh, alternating current. Um, today we will talk about uh, something which is called effective voltage in, um, in case of alternating current, AC. Um, there is another um, abbreviation which is usually used, RMS, and I will explain what each letter means in this particular case. Um, today's lecture is, in, in one way, it's kind of easy, because there is not too much physics in it, but at the same time, um, there is some math. I'll just, just take an integral um, to prove whatever the formula you might, you might have been given uh, by your teachers or professors. Uh, without the proof, but I will just uh, derive this particular formula. Um, now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. Uh, it's uh, presented on unizor.com website. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because each lecture, including this one, has detailed notes on the site, so you have a video and textbook basically. Um, plus, all the lectures are organized in, in a course, so you have menu, you can choose a particular topic, um, and uh, there are exams if you want to take them. And uh, the site is completely free, no strings attached, no advertising, nothing. Okay, so let's go to the concept of effective voltage. Um, well, we all know that there is some number which we are saying, okay, the, the voltage in our outlet in our home is such and such. Uh, in Europe it's mostly 220 volts, in the United States it's 110 or 120, maybe some others. Now what does it mean in case of alternating current if we know that whenever we are generating uh, the alternating current by rotating a wireframe in the magnetic field or magnetic field rotating magnetic field around or inside the wire whatever it is you always have because of this rotation you always have a variable um, voltage variable electromotive gener uh, electromotive force generated by this particular process and it's sinusoidal so the voltage which is generated is always a function of time, which is equal to basically a sinusoidal kind of um, value, which means you have some kind of a amplitude maximum value times sine of omega t, where omega is angular speed of rotation uh, of our wireframe wireframe or, or magnetic field around the um, permanently positioned wireframe. Whatever it is, there is some kind of a rotation, and this is the angular speed of this rotation. And based on this, we are describing uh, our um, voltage generated by this as a function of time. It's changing. And we know that there is a good purpose for this. Because whenever we have an alternating current, whenever we have a variable um, flow of uh, electrons, it produces the variable magnetic field, which can be used to induce another um, uh, current uh, of another voltage using transformers, etc., etc. That's how we trans uh, transmit energy on big and large distance. Okay, so this is my voltage. And that's exactly the voltage which comes to our outlets at home. Now, whatever the values of uh, omega and u max doesn't really matter right now. What matter is, it's variable. It depends sinusoidally. It depends on the time. So, question is, what does it mean that we are saying that our voltage is 220 volts or 110 volts? And here we have to actually come to uh, some reasonable approach to, to this problem. So what is reasonable? Well, we are all practical people and we think it's reasonable to compare whatever the work 
this variable sinusoidal voltage can uh, actually produce during certain amount of time on certain circuit which has certain resistance we can compare it we can compare this amount of work which this can do with amount of work which direct current with a fixed voltage can do during the same time on the same circuit with the same resistance and we can actually say well it's a definition that the effective voltage is such a direct current voltage which produces the same amount of work as this one during the same amount of time on the same circuit so what I'm suggesting to do is let's just choose some circuit which has certain resistance R eventually you will see that it doesn't really depend on the value of R it will cancel so we choose this one arbitrarily and we choose certain period of time now considering this is a periodic function with a period t equals to 2 pi divided by omega right well 2 pi is a full circle omega is that's 2 pi radians right omega is number of radians per seconds that's basically speed this is an ang angular distance and this is angular speed if you divide distance by speed you will have the time time to cover one full circle of 2 pi which is basically a period of a sign so we will choose this period we will choose any kind of resistance and let's just calculate how much work uh, this particular variable uh, um, voltage can do and then we will uh, calculate what's the effective voltage on the direct current which does exactly the same amount of work okay now how can we calculate amount of work if this is variable now we know that if if my voltage is constant then my let's call it u my current would be i divided u divided by r that's the ohm's law right so if we know this now uh, we have derived a, derived a formula for uh, producing heat electric heat there is a topic which is dedicated to this particular um, concept in in this course it's in the direct current part of the course and the amount of work actually is equal to uh, u times i times time or u squared divided by r time right considering the ohm's law or i square r time so all these are equivalent this is amount of work which direct current with voltage u and the amperage i during the time i uh, if you have a circuit of uh, resistance r does okay i will use this one for this particular case however again this is variable u is variable so how can I basically calculate it well that's the mathematics it's technicality as we speak let's just have a very tiny amount of time from t to t plus dt dt is differential it's infinitesimal increment of time so from the moment t to the moment t plus dt we can consider u voltage to have the value u of t variable but on this tiny infinitesimal uh, 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 span of time we can consider it to be um, uh, constant so we can calculate a differential of work at that particular moment using this formula 
this is u square of t divided by r times the period period now is small so the period is from t to t plus dt so the period itself is dt differential infinitesimal um, uh, span of time and during this uh, infinitesimal uh, period we will have infinitesimal amount of work created by the function u of t if uh, the resistance of the circuit is r now what do we have to do next well again we have to basically stretch it to a period doesn't mean to, to do it greater than the period because function is periodical so if we will basically calculate the effective uh, voltage on a period it will be exactly the same on double period on triple period etc right so what I will do now I will integrate this integrate means I will summarize right integrate integration is sum on this uh, period of time from 0 to t well t is 2 pi divided by omega omega is constant so it's it's okay um, and that's basically will give me w amount of work on the period from 0 to uh, to t so let me calculate it and then I will calculate in the same period from 0 to t amount of work which direct current which uh, effective voltage does and I'll compare them I will equalize them and that's how I will derive the effective voltage okay fine so all we have to do is as I said it's technicality um, so it's equal to integral of 0 to t so instead of u of t I will put this u max squared divided by r times sine square of omega t uh, dt all right now this is obviously constant so I'll put it aside outside now integral of 0 to t now we need the little trigonometry uh, I will use the formula sine square x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2 and again if you don't remember this formula and I don't actually I just wrote it here but I do remember another formula cosine of 2x is equal to cosine square x minus sine square x that I do remember but I also know that sine square plus cosine is equal to 1 so instead of cosine I will put 1 minus sine square x and minus another sine square it would be 2 from which sine square is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2 so that's how I without remembering this formula I, rem I remember only this one but I can very easily derive this so there are certain basic formulas in trigonometry from which you can derive everything else so that's why I have my sine of 2x and cosine of 2x remembered everything else I derive okay so um, what else do I do I think what makes sense now is so I can use this formula to get rid of the square square definitely is something which is complication and that would give me this chance I would also like to simplify this and I will put x is equal to omega t omega is a constant so it's okay just plain replacement from which dx is equal to omega times dt now if my time belongs to the interval 0 t my x would be from interval so I would like to replace these this is for time from 0 to capital T now this x would be from 0 to 
uh, omega times t, which is from 0 to omega times t is 2 pi. So actually I can put it here in terms of x to pi um, instead of sine I will change to this so it would be 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2 and instead of dt I will have dx divided by omega so dx and omega would be here So, I just replaced the variable and came to a simpler integral. Why is it simpler? Because this is a square and this is not a square. Equals. Okay, 2 goes outside. So, let me just do it. Here. Now, integral of difference is difference of integrals, right? So, if I have 1 here, this is integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx. Integral of 1 is x, so I have to substitute 4 million newton Leibniz. So, it will be 2 pi and minus 0, so it's 2 pi. So, if I will have... Um, uh, to pi I will have u max square divided by 2r omega 2 pi minus integral of 0 to 2 pi of cosine 2x dx. No, if you wish, again, I can always replace it with instead of 2x, I would like to have y, so it would be cosine of y. Instead of 0 to 2 pi, it would be from 0 to, for y, it would be 4 pi, right? And instead of dx, if my 2x is y, my, uh, it would be dy divided by 2, right? If 2x is equal to y, 2dx equals to dy. So instead of dx, I will have dy divided by 2. Okay, now what is this? Well, this is obviously 0. Because the derivative of cosine is sine, and then I have to substitute upper and lower limits of integration, sine of 4 pi, sine of 0, they're all 0, 0 minus 0, 0. So the whole thing is equal to just this part. And 2 and 2 will cancel out, so I will have this. That's my W, 0, T, for variable voltage, for alternating current, sinusoidal voltage. Fine, great. So that's basically the most important piece of this lecture, to come up with this formula, because to equalize it with direct current is easy. Now, direct current is constant. Uh, voltage and the constant voltage is something u effective square divided by r times t so I would like to find the voltage of the direct current which produce exactly the same amount of work as the variable one that's why I put this equal sign u effective is unknown okay okay t is 
2 pi divided by omega, right? So what's left here? r omega, r omega, pi and pi. What's left is u max square is equal to 2 u effective square. That's my formula. And I would like to emphasize that in many cases you have complex calculations, but the final result is relatively simple. This is as simple as it can be, quite frankly. Um, so from which follows that u max is equal to square root of 2 u effective. So if we are talking about our voltage uh, in, in the alternating current circuit is, let's say, 220, then it means that my um, variable voltage is changing from maximum equals to 220 times square root of 2 to minus 220 times square root of 2. And that's, these are the peak, peak voltage, U max or peak voltage or uh, amplitude, whatever the terminology is, that's the maximum voltage. But effective voltage is something which you are used to know about your own uh, outlet. By the way, if it's uh, 220 volts, effective voltage, as we are saying in our outlet, it means effective. It means that U maximum, the amplitude, the peak, is equal to 220 times square root of 2. I have calculated it somewhere. It's 311 volts. So this is the maximum voltage. So it goes from plus 311 down to 0 to minus 311, up to 0, plus 311, etc. But the considering the amount of work which this variable voltage is producing, it's equivalent to having a constant voltage of 220. Now, if it's 110 volts, then U maximum is equal to 156. If it's 120 volts, it's 170. So that's basically it. That's all I wanted to talk about right now. I would like to explain what exactly is uh, when we are saying that the voltage is such and such in our outlet. What does it mean if we have uh, an alternating current? Now let's talk about these three letters. R stands for root. This is a root. M stands for mean. And S stands for square, mean square. Because what we actually have done, we have squared our voltage and integrated, which means we are averaging it on an interval of from 0 to t, to, 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 to period. So that's why it's a root mean square. We are basically, what actually root mean square is, if you have a and b, it's a square plus b square divided by 2 square root. That's the mean between two of these two, th two different things. But if you have an infinite number of these points, if you have a variable function, integration means what? You are dividing into infinite number of infinitis infinitesimal pieces, and then you summarize it, and then you divide it by period, basically, because you have considered only one period rather than just any amount of time. So that's equivalent of dividing by time. So that's average. So again, root square, square root, um, I mean root mean square, that's what it is. Um, well, that's it. I do suggest you to read the text accompanying this particular lecture on unizor.com. Um, so you go to um, this website, you choose the Physics for Teens uh, course. It's um, in the chapter called electromagnet, electromagnetism, uh, and then in the AC you have like properties of 
um, alternating current. This is one of those lectures in this topic. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.